Brian White was diagnosed with the AIDS virus on December 17, 1984, at the age of 13. He was one of the first children, one of the first hemophiliacs to come down with AIDS, and it was definitely a time where there was no education and hardly any information on AIDS at the time. I became the target of Ryan White jokes. Lies about me biting people, spitting on vegetables and cookies in grocery stores, and urinating on bathroom walls. Some restaurants threw away my dishes, and my locker was vandalized inside and folders were marked bag and other obscenities. Ryan really became famous because of his fight to go to school. When Ryan was diagnosed, they gave him only three to six months to live. So at that time, his mother thought that every cough, every fever, was going to be his last. Night singer Elton John said a public goodbye before he went back to Ryan's bedside. This one's for Ryan. Your candle burned out long before. Your legend ever did. Singer Elton John returned to Ryan's bedside after his concert to be with Ryan in his final moments. After Ryan's passing, Elton played a song called Skyline Pigeon at his funeral, which over 1,500 people attended. To this day, Elton John thinks of Ryan as a friend and as an inspiration and says that he owes his entire career to him. Elton John still speaks out about the fight for AIDS with his nonprofit organization, the Elton John AIDS Foundation, that helps fund money for the research of AIDS. Um, in 2006, one of our seed grants went to the Children's Museum of Indianapolis to help them create the Ryan White portion of their Power of Children exhibit. And while we at the Elton John AIDS Foundation are very much committed to helping people living with HIV and AIDS here and now, we also feel very strongly that it's extremely important to remember and his historically encapsulate the stories and achievements of people like Ryan that should never, never be forgotten. Perhaps more than any other person, Ryan White drastically changed America's perception of the HIV and AIDS epidemic. It took a young child to die before the government in this country did anything to help anybody with HIV and AIDS. That is a disgrace. If you look back historically, it took a sick young boy like Ryan White to get the government off its backside and do something for everybody. And we, everybody is in t so indebted to this boy for what he did, because until then, the government couldn't have cared less over him. His fighting spirit attracted many friends and admirers, including pop star Michael Jackson and First Lady Barbara Bush. Singer Elton John gave his final tribute to Ryan in song.
So your your feelings of seeing all this after all this time? Very sad. Subscribe to this magazine, don't you? Pardon? I mean, this is a subscription for you? This is... Yeah, we can buy it in the store. Hmm. That's a pretty one. What is it about these that you like? I don't know, just the way they, way they look, the way they handle. <laughs> this a Mustang? Yeah, it's a funny car, like. This one look like it's like a racer one. Hmm. This is the kind you have in here? Show it to me. It's something like that one, except red. What color is yours? I don't have these pieces at the bottom. With those fancy wheels, but... How fast do these go? They say they'll go 140. 140? When you get in your car, like, where do you ride around to? Like, yes? Just round down, cruise around, stop maybe for Coke or something. <laughs> you have a good sound system in yours? Yeah. Big speakers. I have a good sound system in my car with a lot of bottom. I like because when the, when the music comes on, I like it to be an impact. Bounce all the way down yeah, there. Yeah, well, you feel the vibration. <laughs> who, who do you listen to, like, when you... I listen to you and Bobby Brown. Really anything that has a good beat to it, too. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Keep the pneumocystis away. It's a rare form of pneumonia. Only AIDS patients get. Oh. So it's important that you keep warm and all of that, huh? Try to stay away from colds. Mm. Anything that involves the lungs is very important. Mm. But it's so cold where you live in Indiana. W originally, where were you born? Kokomo. Kokomo. That's, that's, what happened actually down there with the... Um, well, when I got AIDS, I, uh, not a lot was known about it then. So we, uh, I was in the hospital and wasn't feeling very good. But when I got out of the hospital, I started feeling a lot better. And just... You know, I got bored, so I wanted to know if I'd go back to school, but I felt fine, you know, at the time. So I tried to get me back in school, and they said there was no way. And it just started a big, long core battle. Mm. And mostly just people's fear and ignorance of AIDS. Stupid. The way it was spread. Now, what, what age were you when that first happened? I was 13. 13. Wow. How old were you when, you when you first knew you had AIDS? 13. Ah, oh, that's when it, yeah, because I remember seeing that on the television. Boy, that is so, now oh, you live in what? Cicero. How far is that from Kokomo? About 30 miles. 
yourself. And these people in this new town, how are they treating you? Great. They really, they, uh, before I come there to their school, they took the time and educated and understood all the, everything there really was to understand about AIDS. That's the way, yeah. And they really accepted me with open arms and just treat me like I was any other person there. Mm. Mm. What are some of the things, like some of the hardships that those people put you through in Kokomo? Like, well, my mom saw us to work in Kokomo, so she uh, she's on a year's leave of absence right now, and they give her a really hard time at work because they blame her for uh, just for all the trouble that went on. They say. She pushed me to do things, and she was a cruel mother. She pushed you to do what? Forced me to want to go back to school. Uh -huh. I had to stay home, and she said they didn't love me because I, she wanted me to go back to school, and because I would go there, and you know, I, that I could really get sick, and she just didn't care for me. But that wasn't true at all. It was my decision. Really? That's, that's stupid. Your mother's so sweet. I mean, she seemed to be very nice. She's, she's pretty great. She's probably helped me through all this. Hmm. Wow. Well, how do you feel now? So, so I feel, you know, I'm feeling it's winter time back home, so I'm not. Mm -hmm. I've got a sore throat, and but you know, otherwise I'm feeling pretty good. Hmm. You, you look better this time, though. I know I keep saying that, right? <laughs> so, no, last time you just didn't look as well. Maybe I was exhausted <laughs> after all day. But I noticed uh, you were more active last time because you went swimming, you rode the motorbike. It was warm, would it? That's true. I don't think I want to go swimming today. <laughs> but you went in the jacuzzi. Hmm. It's interesting. I remember you were talking about um, when we were in the car, um, how um, perseverance and your will to want to live is one of the things that have, you know, yeah. made you survive so long when so many other AIDS patients have died. I mean, a lot of them don't have their family support either. You know, their family support. I only really have my family support. Plus, I've had a strong will, you know, to plan things and, you know, like tomorrow, tomorrow morning I'm going to get up and I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to have orange juice and cereal. I'm not just going to think, what if I don't make it till tomorrow? I think about tomorrow and I plan. I think it has a lot to do with, you know, you're just a positive mental attitude. Mm. So, like, if you're in the hospital, you, you're not thinking... Uh, how sad it is, and right. uh, gee, if I'm ever going to get out of here, you're you really you're positive. You know you're going to be okay. That's great. I try to think, you know, what I'm going to do when I'm going to when I get out. Yeah. So, so you're saying your mind has a lot to do with your health. That's everything. That's that's great inspiration for a lot of sick people to know that. And I believe in that. It's very true. Oh, your stuff you wanted me to see. Yeah. I can't believe that. That's really amazing. And have you, I mean, to have you mentally survive it after all of that. It's all new, real news clippings, too. It's amazing. You've really been strong. I have to give it to you. You've really been strong. It's amazing. I mean, people can be so ignorant. I can't believe it. You think they would have some sense of compassion after, you know, something like that. But that's why you're still here and who you are. Anyway, um, great.
Let's go, um, let's take a walk. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. <laughs>
Thank you, Mr. President-elect, for inviting me to your inauguration gala. I would like to take a moment from this very public ceremony to speak of something very personal. It concerns a dear friend of mine who is no longer with us. His name is Ryan White. He was a hemophiliac who was diagnosed with the AIDS virus when he was 11. He died shortly after turning 18, the very time most young people are beginning to explore life's wonderful possibilities. My friend Ryan was a very bright, very brave, and very normal young man who never wanted to be a symbol or a spokesperson for a deadly disease. Over the years, I've shared many silly, happy, and painful moments with Ryan, and I was with him at the end of his brief but eventful journey. Ryan is gone, and just as anyone who has lost a loved one to AIDS, I miss him deeply and constantly. He is gone, but I want his life to have meaning beyond his passing. It is my hope, President-elect Clinton, that you and your administration commit the resources needed to eliminate this awful disease that took my friend and ended so many promising lives before their time. This song is for you, Ryan.